So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to convert the PCB to a schematic. And all that's going to do is place the uh, components in the PCB layout. As far as how we're going to locate them and position them, that uh, we'll be doing that entirely manually. So you can see it spreads the components out uh, kind of all over the place. So I'm going to just arrange the components. So all it does is group them together, but doesn't optimize their placement. I'm going to turn off these rat lines, which are the blue lines you see that show each connection. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just uh, arrange the components uh, roughly where I want them to go. So I'm moving the micro USB connector. U2 is the linear regulator. Uh, the, which I'll place next to the micro USB since that's what feeds uh, the 5 volt input supply. So before we start, uh, I'm going to put the capacitor on the input of the linear regulator. But before doing that, we have to find out uh, how wide the traces need to be for the current to be able to carry the intended current. So I'm going to first look up and see uh, what the supply current is for this particular microcontroller. You can see they give you a table showing you various different operation operating conditions and the maximum current, which is 24.6 milliamps running at the highest speed at 105 degrees C. Um, so that's the maximum that the microcontroller itself will use. However, the GPIO pins can also drive uh, current. So the actual current uh, required by the microcontroller can be higher. So I'm going to look under the absolute maximum conditions or maximum ratings. And you can see here it gives you the total current into the all VDD power lines is 120 milliamps. So for this initial tutorial, we're going to design it, assuming that that's the maximum current that we'll ever need uh, to be supplied. So I'm going to use that to set the trace width. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a PCB trace width calculator tool. And I'm going to uh, set the input current at 0.12 uh, amps or 120 milliamps. The thickness is one ounce per cube or square foot, which is sort of a, a standard starting point for the thickness of the conductors. And you can see this is giving me a trace resistance or a trace width of only 0.635 mils, which is extremely small. Um, you can see here I've, I've increased the current to one amp and it's still only 11.8 milli, uh, mils wide trace width. So the point is, is we can even use minimum trace width uh, for the power supply connections, and that will be more than sufficient to carry the 120 milliamps. Um, however, just as general practice, I don't really ever like to use minimum width uh, for any uh, power supply traces. So I went ahead and bumped them up from 6 mils, which I'm saying is the minimum width uh, trace width for this design, and I bumped it up to 10 mils. So I'm adding the, the output capacitor to the linear regulator. That's C2. So now we've got the input supply coming in, and C2 is the 3.3 supply coming out. Uh, now we just have to connect up pin 3 uh, to uh, VN. Pin 3 is the enable pin. So I've just tied it to VN, which means it's always going to be enabled. But beware of doing what I just did, which is routing underneath the part, because it's going to limit your ability to modify the board in the future if, if needed. Um, obviously, you can do it with a, a new design, um, but you won't be able to hack the board very easily. Uh, like, for instance, if you wanted to trace, cut that enable pin trace, uh, you would have to remove U2, uh, cut it, and then solder it back down. So now we're going to start uh, placing the various uh, capacitors, the decoupling capacitors, on the uh, supply input pins of the microcontroller, which is U1. So there are three uh supply pins and each one of those requires uh, two capacitors. So C3 and C5 go to pin one. That's uh, one of the two VDD pins or the input supply pins to the microcontroller. So the, the next pin is, uh, is pin 17 is the VDD IO which is the supply for the input output and this case I'm going to just use the same 3.3 volt supply for the IO as I do for the VDD. Okay, let's turn these around. I'll select both of them and I'm going to move them over right next to pin 17. And I'll just connect those up. 
using I've, I've got it set so it's using a, a 10 mil wide trace now let's flip c7 and c8 around these are going to go over next to pin 5 which is the other vdd pin you'll notice uh, things highlighting is red if i select a net or a pin it highlights everything else that connects to that net um, in red so that, that's why you're seeing kind of various pins flashing red so I've laid these out, C3 and C5, but you can see they, they kind of block pins uh, 2, 3, and 4. You can't really get them out very easily. So I'm going to flip them around and scoot them up at the top here. So now I can get, I can access uh, pins 2, 3, and 4 much easier now. Okay, so that's the uh, three sets of decoupling capacitors. Now we just have, there's a, a capacitor, uh, a small capacitor on the reset line. So that's just going to hold the reset to ground uh, just momentarily uh, when the when you first apply power. So it just uh, automatically resets the microcontroller at startup. And that's uh, just a 100 nanofarad capacitor. So move the programming connector a little bit closer here. You'll notice I've labeled the connector a JTAG connector, um, which is what it is, but we're really not using the JTAG uh, programming protocol. We're using the uh, serial wire debug or SWD. Just rearranging some components, uh, kind of make them uh, fit a little nicer on the board. So now we've got to connect up the uh, supply that goes to the the programming connector so i'll just tap it off that capacitor which is uh, going to the the vdd or the 3.3 volt line yeah. okay. oops i'm just uh Trying to increase the width to, to 10. I, I changed the default back to 6. Okay, so now the programming connector has power. Okay, so now we're going to connect up the two programming lines. But as you can see, I can't get there without uh, uh, shorting to another connector or another line. So what I've done is I veered to the bottom side. That's what the red circle means. Uh, so you see there's a light gray line. So I, I went to the bottom, then I veered back up to the top and then connected to the pin. So same way here, I can't get out. So I'm gonna via down to the bottom side. So now I'm on the bottom side. So I'll get me over near the pin I wanna to connect to on the microcontroller. there and now i'm going to via back to the top side so i can connect to the pin okay so i believe that's most of it. so now we're going to connect up the actual 3.3 voltage uh, that's coming out of the linear regulator so that that needs to uh, connect into the microcontroller so that's what i'm doing here i'm going to change that trace width uh, to the 10 So that's connected up. Uh, that's got me connected uh, to at least uh, pin one VDD. So now I'm just connecting up the reset pin of the microcontroller. Um, and I went ahead and V it on the bottom side so I could connect uh, the supply line, which is what I'm doing here. So I'm keeping the supply line on the top side and the connection to the reset pin uh, went to the bottom side. So now we have pin one, pin five powered. We have the uh, programming connector powered. Now we need to supply power over to pin 17, which is uh, C4 and C6. So I'll just uh, tap off right here. And just remember, you notice that there, you, you don't see any 90 degree turns. Uh, you don't ever want to 
uh, do 90 degree turns when doing PCB layout. Uh, you always want to angle the corners like you'll see that I'm doing. Otherwise, the current actually gets crowded up in that corner and uh, essentially adds a parasitic and can slow things down. Okay, now we're going to add, um, instead of connecting all the grounds with traces, we're going to use what's called a copper pour. So basically, I'm going to just draw out a rectangle around everything, and I'm going to tell uh, the software, uh, dip trace in this case, that this is going to be a conducting layer and that I want it connected to ground. So I'm connecting it to ground. Set the spacing to six. I'm going to tell it to remove any pieces of the copper that it, uh, or what are unconnected. So like a little island, like you can see there uh, between pin one and five of the microcontroller, there's the, there's no copper pour there because that couldn't have actually connected into anything. So it was just removed. So now we have the copper, uh, the copper pour, which is going to, is our ground. Now I'm just kind of loosely drawing the outline of the board. But what I want to do is I'm going to, change the copper pour so that it shapes to the board, snaps to board outline with a 20 mil space. So you can see how now it filled up the entire board right up to the edge. Now we'll run a verification. So I just verified there were no DRC errors. And now I'm verifying that it matches the schematic. And you can see no errors were found. So in this first tutorial, I've made it so that it's totally clean. Uh, from a DRC design rules check and schematic verification check, but in the future we'll cover some errors. So now I'm going to generate the Gerber files, which are used uh, for production. This is what you'll actually send to the prototype shop or the manufacturer. And there are actually a separate Gerber file for each of the layers. So I'm just going through here layer by layer generating the Gerber. And as I explained in the article, there are are more than just the conducting layers in this. There's also the silk screen, which shows you like component designators. Uh, there's a, a mask and a paste layers as well that are generated. So now I'm gonna generate the, a drill file, which shows you where all the, the vias, which are holes, and any mounting holes are located. So all this can be fed into their uh, production assembly equipment. So this will be automatically done. And finally, I'm creating what's called a pick and place a report or file, which is just a spreadsheet file, but it lists every component and the orientation and uh, location of that component. So that's for their pick and place machines to be able to identify the component and just automatically place it on the board uh, for soldering. Okay, that finishes up the second part of this tutorial, and we now have a completed PCB design that can be sent to a PCB prototype shop for fabrication. So in the first uh, two parts of this tutorial, you've learned how to design a system block diagram, uh, how to select all the critical components, uh, how to design the schematic circuit diagram, how to design the printed circuit board layout, and then how to order uh, generate Gerbers and order prototypes of your board. Um, for this uh, first tutorial, the first two parts of this tutorial, I have purposely kept the simple, uh, the circuit quite simple, just so I don't want you to be overwhelmed with circuit complexity. Um, but that being said, you know, really a uh, microcontroller without any additional functionality isn't really all that useful. So this, these first two parts is more of a learning exercise. Um, but in future tutorials, uh, I'll be greatly expanding on this circuit uh, that we've started in this, uh, the first two parts. Um, we'll add a lot of additional features such as uh, battery charging, um, a display, uh, some wireless communication such as Bluetooth, Wi-Fi. Um, we'll add some uh, GP, a GPS module, uh, USB data communication, and various sensors. So I hope you found this uh, tutorial useful and stay tuned for uh, future uh, additions to this series.